making my entrance again with my usual flair. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 notoriously bad singing performances in movie musicals. I'm so sorry. No apology necessary. I told you nothing hurts me. I have no feelings. For this list, we'll be looking at stars whose musical performances in films left something to be desired. To be clear, we're not saying the actors or movies themselves are necessarily bad, just that the singing wasn't quite up to par. Who would you have cast in these roles? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Oliver Reed, Tommy the Who's concept album Tommy received a surreal and psychedelic movie adaptation in 1975. Between Anne Margaret writhing around in baked beans and the alternative practices of Tina Turner's character, it's a pretty memorable trip of a cinematic experience. One thing that sticks out like a sore thumb is Oliver Reed. Although a good actor, many feel that Reed's singing is not up to par with the rest of the cast. For one thing, the contrast is almost hilarious when he and Anne Margaret duet. Of course he will, I'll make him small, I'll take him out to cinemas and again. Her style isn't exactly subtle, but his voice is almost like a foghorn. Rather blunt, one could say it's not exactly super pleasant on the ears. Number 19, Emma Watson, Beauty and the Beast. Little town, it's a quiet village. Every day, like the one before. Emma Watson divided many with her portrayal of Belle in Disney's live action remake of Beauty and the Beast. Some felt that she captured Belle's independent, understanding, and well read nature to a T. Others argued that she was basically just playing Hermione Granger for the ninth time. One thing almost everyone seems to agree on, however, is that Watson's singing voice can't hold a candle to Paige O'Hara's. We do somewhat blame the autotune, though. Here's a sample of O'Hara's sweeping singing voice from the 1991 animated classic. I want adventure in the great white somewhere. Now let's stack that up against Watson's vocal chops. Between these two actresses, it's pretty obvious which one was born to be on Broadway. Nonetheless, there's no denying that this remake was an overall hit. New and a bit alarming. Who'd have ever thought that this could be? Number 18, Gerard Butler, The Phantom of the Opera. Michael Crawford won a Tony Award for originating the titular role of Andrew Lloyd Webber's The Phantom of the Opera. Crawford was set to reprise the part when Warner Brothers purchased the film rights in 1989, but the picture was in development hell for so long that the filmmakers eventually turned their attention to Gerard Butler. My power over you grows stronger yet. The Scottish actor possessed next to no musical experience and only had four singing lessons before auditioning for Weber. Nevertheless, director Joel Schumacher was convinced that Butler could pull it off based on his performance in Dracula 2000. Butler had a harder time convincing audiences, though, as his singing failed to hit any high notes, both figuratively and literally. Let your soul take you where you long to be. Number 17, Rosalind Russell, Gypsy. She was a legendary star of classic Hollywood and even found success in the 1953 Broadway musical Wonderful Town. Still, Rosalind Russell was not a go-to choice for musical comedy. I could have been better than any of you. What I got in me, what I've been holding down inside of me. The role of Mama Rose has been played by some of Broadway's most powerful vocalists. So, when Russell was cast in the movie instead of original Broadway star Ethel Merman, it raised a few eyebrows. Well, they can stay and rot! But not Rose! Once production got going, Russell's husky voice was deemed unsuitable, and most of the tracks were either remixed 
or re-recorded by singer Lisa Kirk. Russell's singing voice does still appear in a few spots in the movie, though. And let's just say those moments stand out. Some people got it and make it pay. Some people can't even give it away. This people's got it and this people's spreading it around. Number 16, Walter Matthau, Hello Dolly. The character of Horace Vandergelder is an old curmudgeon. While he's not necessarily cast with the prettiest voice in mind, it is a musical film after all. You artists, you painters produce nothing that nobody needs, never! When you're casting for a musical with Barbara Streisand, whose pipes could blow anyone off the screen with very little effort, it's doubly important to find someone who can hold their own. Walter Matthau was a movie star, but not even movie star charisma can disguise the fact that his voice is something of a rough listen. Oh yes, it takes a woman, a husky woman. He only has one number mainly to himself, but it's enough time to see and hear his limitations. The dancing, though? The dancing's epic. We have no notes. And so Number 15, Seth Rogen, The Lion King. The live-action-ish remake of this Disney property got some flack for its gorgeous and lifelike but somewhat unengaging CGI lions. As the voice of the lovable and flatulent warthog Pumbaa, Rogen's acting is peerless. He's charming and hilarious. And then the music starts. When I was a young warthog! <laughs> How you feeling? It's an emotional story. Rogan's clearly not a singer, and the movie seems aware of this. Even when he's part of a group of other performers, you can hear he's always just slightly off. Near the village, the peaceful village, the lion sleeps tonight. Admittedly, it's not easy to compete with the energy Ernie Sabella brought to the original film. Luckily, many of Pumbaa's musical moments can be talked through. And I got downhearted! Every time that I farted, are you gonna stop me? No, I'm not! Number 14, Rebel Wilson, Cats. Let's face it, nothing about the 2019 Cats movie has ever really made sense. The least they could have done is give us musical numbers that sounded great. Let's dance! <laughs> Most folks will tell you that Rebel Wilson's turn as Jenny Any Dots the Gumby Cat makes about as much sense as anything else in the flick. It doesn't help that her character's weight is problematically played for laughs. So Wilson seems a bit breathless and keeps falling down throughout her main number. When the day's hustle and bustle is done, then the Gumby Cat's work is but hardly begun. You would think the horrifying CGI and cheap gags would distract us from the performance. But no, if anything, it just adds insult to injury. And I've even created a Beatles tattoo! Number 13, Nipsey Russell, The Wiz. I like what I see. And I'd be more than glad to share all that I have inside of here. The Wiz was clearly cast with stars in mind. Diana Ross, Michael Jackson, and Lena Horne were some of the biggest entertainers around in the 1970s. Nipsey Russell was certainly a huge star in his own right, and his unique brand of comedy and dancing made him a natural choice for the part of the Tin Man. Slide some more to me. I'm beginning to feel just fine. Slide some oil down my throat and let me lubricate my mind. Although Russell's first scene is a rollicking good time, some have criticized his habit of largely talking through his songs rather than fully singing them. That sort of choice sticking out is a risk that comes with being in a cast with this many fantastic singers. The genius who created me only took care of my dash and good looks, my razor-sharp wit, and my irresistible attraction to the wrong women. <laughs> Number 12, Sylvester Stallone, Rhinestone. Remember when Dolly Parton and Sylvester Stallone teamed up for a country-flavored musical comedy? You don't? Well, you're in luck because we sure do. If you want it, I want it, get it. If it's country, don't come crying to me. 
The movie finds Parton as a singer who makes a bet with a sleazy manager that she can make an average dude of his choosing into a country star. Oh, and she says she can do so in a matter of weeks. That average dude is, of course, Stallone's character. But wiser you created a monster, and they call him freaking Stein. The fact that he barely looks convincing just standing on a stage is bad enough. But when he sings, he sort of sounds like a guy doing dive bar karaoke. He did record his own vocals for the movie, so kudos for the effort. Number 11. Marlon Brando, Guys and Dolls Known for his brutish and lived-in performances, Marlon Brando was among Hollywood's most bankable stars in the 50s. That's probably what convinced producers to offer him the lead in this musical, more so than his singing. And I won't ever ask, am I right, am I wise, am I smart, but I'll stop. Adapted from the stage show, Guys and Dolls follows two gamblers looking for luck and love. Brando may have been a massive star, but his voice leaves a lot to be desired. You might forget your manners, you might refuse to stay. And so the best that I can do is pray. Co-star Frank Sinatra was not enamored with Brando's musical talents either reportedly nicknaming him Mumbles. The production as a whole was largely well-received, and reviews of Brando's work are balanced overall. But it doesn't change the fact that Sinatra outclasses him vocally. All right already, it's true, so new, so sue me, sue me. Number 10, Lucille Ball, Mame. Though it may not be anyone's birthday, and though it's far from the first of the year, I know that this very minute has history in it. We're here! The lead character in Mame is a fun-loving and adventurous woman who fills her days with new experiences. It's incredible, then, that the movie is kind of dull. Unfortunately, a lot of that has to do with master comedienne Lucille Ball. Slice up the fruitcake. It's time we hung some tinsel on that evergreen bow. While no one can deny Ball's comedy chops, many agree that she barely gets through the movie's musical numbers. Executives reportedly didn't hire original Broadway lead Angela Lansbury because she wasn't a big enough name. Most reviewers, for their part, were sadly excessively unkind to Ball, often citing her age as the problem instead of her voice. But even Lucy fans have to admit, the singing is not ideal. Whenever they say you're slightly unconventional, just with your thumbs up to your nose. Number 9. Elizabeth Taylor, A Little Night Music It's worth noting that Stephen Sondheim wrote Send in the Clowns for original Broadway star Glynis Johns, who could sing but whose range was limited. However, like many performers on this list, Elizabeth Taylor was a big star, though she was not a singer. Don't you love us? My fault, I fear. I thought that you'd want what I want. Sorry. There's a warble in her voice that winds up being rather distracting. Although Send in the Clowns is the character's most vulnerable moment, her almost stringy vocal doesn't read as intentional. Instead, she almost seems afraid. And where are the clowns? There ought to be clowns. Her performance in the movie version of this classic Sondheim musical was rather maligned. It was one of the few career setbacks for Taylor around that time and she ended up entering a period of semi-retirement. Just when I stopped opening doors Finally knowing the one that I wanted was yours Number 8. Everyone, Lost Horizon After The Sound of Music became the highest-grossing film of its time, Hollywood dished out several rip-offs. Oh, help! Lost Horizon is widely considered the film that killed this trend, earning the nickname of Lost Investments. 
where The Sound of Music managed to blend corniness with genuine charm, this musical is a cornball that misses the most important mark, quality singing. The cast, which includes usually reliable names like Peter Finch and Liv Ullman, sing with a little too much pep, which is odd since the plot revolves around a plane crash. The world is a circle without a beginning and nobody knows where it really ends. Where the original Frank Capra film won two Oscars, this remake was listed in the book The 50 Worst Films of All Time. Let me show you just how I became an educated man. Number 7. Almost Everyone, Repo the Genetic Opera This horror musical is so disgusting, disturbing, and depraved that it's actually developed a cult following akin to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. How about that? Calling the film so bad it's good is probably the highest compliment someone can give Repo, however. To be fair, the cast isn't completely tone deaf. Sarah Brightman and Anthony Stewart Head are both charismatic singers and give it their all here. Everyone else, meanwhile, sounds like they're sleepwalking through each bleak, brooding number. And when the gun goes off, it sparks and you're ready for surgery. Even Paul Sorvino, an established opera singer, seemed to leave his talent at home. It's nice to see young talent blooming. The film also includes a Razzie winning performance from Paris Hilton. Sometimes I wonder why I need you at all. Number 6. Clint Eastwood, Paint Your Wagon. Paint Your Wagon? A cowboy musical? Nobody's coming to this. Yes, well, it's Coach Franklin's favorite film. Lee Marvin and Clint Eastwood, two of the biggest names in the Western genre, finally came together in Paint Your Wagon. And how did these two gunslinging badasses spend their time? Singing for over two and a half hours, of course. The Simpsons probably summed up this old-fashioned, campy musical best. We ain't bragging, we're gonna coat that wood. We're gonna paint that wagon, we're gonna paint it good. They ain't bragging, they're gonna coat that wood. Ah! It'd be one thing if the singing was spot on, but that's sadly not exactly the case. Eastwood, in particular, has been criticized for his bitter voice. Then I got gold fever. He's an artist of many different talents, but there's a reason why the trees and stars would rather not listen to him. But suddenly my words reach someone else's ear, touch someone else's heartstrings too. Still, Marvin is not exactly a go-to musical guy either. Do I know where hell is? Hell is in hello. Heaven is goodbye forever. It's time for me to go. Number 5. Tom Cruise, Rock of Ages you got the beaches, I got the This rock jukebox musical was one of the most hyped stage-to-film adaptations of the early 21st century, with Tom Cruise's star power being one of the marketing campaign's driving forces. You should do it with the upcoming Warner Brothers movie Rock of Ages based on the hit Broadway musical Rocking a Theater Near You June 15th. Tom Cruise sings! Cruise plays Stacy Jacks, a rock and roll god slowly fading into obscurity. I see To his credit, Cruz is actually quite convincing as a musician who spent most of his life partying and rocking out. What he lacks, however, are the vocal chops to really pull the persona off. I wanna feel what love is. I know you can show me. Cruz reportedly spent five hours a day preparing for this role, and it's apparent that he's trying his best. Trying is the key word, though, as Cruz's limited voice never makes the crowd go wild. Axl Rose, he ain't. No. When I'm done, we literally need to burn this place to the ground. Otherwise, the Fire Phoenix gets trapped. Alec Baldwin arguably didn't fare much better. I said there is no reason for my fear. This is a dream come true. Number 4. Rex Harrison, Dr. Doolittle. 
Rather than singing in the traditional sense, this English actor was better known for talking on pitch. With his performance as Professor Henry Higgins in My Fair Lady, Harrison got away with singing in recitative because his sardonic delivery fit the character perfectly. The sort who never could, ever would, let an insulting remark escape his lips. Sadly, the same can't be said about his performance as the titular protagonist in Dr. Doolittle. I'm a devoted vegetarian. Harrison is flat and disinterested in the role, so that you can't quite tell when one of his songs even begins. If we could talk to the animals, learn their languages, maybe take an animal degree. The fact that he can't sing made it all the more infamous that Leslie Brickus's Talk to the Animals won the Academy Award for Best Original Song, beating out The Bear Necessities. Look for the bear necessities, the simple bear necessities. Forget about your worries and your stress. Number 3. Cameron Diaz, Annie Depending who you ask, Annie is either a timeless classic or a rather dated schmaltzfest. No matter where you stand, the 2014 film adaptation of the Broadway musical is generally viewed as a misfire. The movie is full of questionable casting choices, but none raised more eyebrows than Cameron Diaz as Miss Hannigan. This cruel caretaker is typically depicted as old, grungy, and washed up, which aren't exactly words we'd use to describe the beautiful Diaz. Little girls, little girls, everywhere I turn I can see them. Aside from being painfully over the top in the role, Diaz's singing voice sounds forced and unpolished especially when compared to her predecessor, Carol Burnett. Little girls, little girls, everywhere I turn, I can see them. Ironically, Diaz's intentionally bad singing from My Best Friend's Wedding was arguably a step up. I'm so used to doing everything for you. Number 2. Russell Crowe, Les Miserables Believe it or not, this Oscar-winning actor had aspirations to be a musician before hitting it big in Hollywood, releasing several singles throughout the 80s. That being said, it's evident why Crow found fame on a set and not in a recording booth. His turn as Javert in Les Miserables is perhaps the most notable example of his lackluster singing skills. And I'm Javert! Do not forget my name! Critics and audiences largely found Crow's portrayal to be dull and lifeless. That is certainly not what you want when you're singing Lee Miz songs. This I swear, this I swear by the stars. Having to share the screen with seasoned singers like Hugh Jackman and Anne Hathaway only draws more attention to the problem. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Pierce Brosnan, Mamma Mia This one might be so bad we love it. This film adaptation of the Jukebox stage production brought together a star-studded ensemble. Unfortunately, not every cast member can carry a note, and Pierce Brosnan's singing voice is the biggest letdown. It used to be so nice, it used to be so good. Look, there's no denying that his overall portrayal of Sam is fun and engaging. It's just the singing sounds more like something you'd expect to hear at karaoke than in a movie musical. Even critics who enjoyed the film generally agreed that Brosnan is the last person who should be in a musical. There's no hurry. And done. For his performance, the Irish actor received a Razzie for Worst Supporting Actor. And you know it. Say I do. I do. Interestingly, he barely sang in the sequel and said he was relieved about that turn of events. It will get better. Yeah. Just not quite yet. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.